We're driving down to a job here in Point Pleasant, New Jersey. We're running parallel to the Intercoastal Waterway and she's getting water inside of her first level. As you can see right here, the storm sewer is loaded up. It's not draining out. This is at the end of a peninsula. There is a little harbor marina right here at the end of the road. Kind of a little park as you turn around the bulkhead that's all holding back groundwater from the entire neighborhood and there's no way for that groundwater to drain out unless it perks down into the ground of course you got the bay here and the ocean the storm sewers are not drained out because we've got high tide right now so this is going to be something that she's going to be subject to pretty much the entire time she owns the home. This home was a victim of Sandy. Uh, actually, there was two homes on the property and they ended up building this new home. It is up on friction piles. It sits right on the water of the intercoastal waterway. She's had lots of trouble in here. She's had several estimates. People have offered her interior water management systems and uh, these systems just aren't going to work on a property like this because the issue really is water not able to get out because of the bulkheads. You can see the intercoastal waterway here. That is basically a dam and the water simply cannot drain out as I said earlier. If you look the other way, you can see we're going to be going all the way up the entire length of the property and then the entire neighborhood as well. This is an elevated home. As I said, it's up on friction piles, so there really is no basement at all. It's a slab floor over the top of backfill, compacted soil, we hope. You can see the friction piles there on the left. Some of the systems that she was uh, getting quotes for were a box gutter system. They were planning on installing that alongside this long wall here now keep in mind that was wall is a framed wall and uh, a box gutter is really not going to do anything because her issue is hydrostatic pressure being uh, pushed up and pooling inside of the yard so this entire length here they were going to do and then that back wall that you're seeing there in the far distance that may have released some water from the edge and taken it out from the edge but she has major issues in her yard uh, as far as just flooding out all the time so the interior water management is really at this point a band-aid on a bullet wound it really doesn't offer her a total solution you can see here we've got the front wall there is a block wall there but it's on top of a slab and that is really just holding back the landscape outside she's got some kind of dunes out there but you can see that the water is penetrating right there there's a downspout right in the corner there on the outside that uh, was not diverted so the builder didn't even consider uh, any type of water management on the property. He just built the home and I guess hope it would work and pass the buck down right to the next owner. You can see that there is water penetration on this block wall. There's efflorescence present. That's the white powder that you see. That is uh, acid water that is leaching through the block and leaving that uh, the proposal that I gave her was an exterior water management system and you can see that I am digging out the uh, trench or the perimeter of the house here below the slab. We start uh, 
on the high side, usually about 10 inches down, and then we go usually 14, 16, 18 inches. It really just depends on the length of the pipe. Behind this soil here is that block wall that you were seeing earlier in the video. You can see the soil line, so the soil was all piled up against that wall. And what you're looking at here uh, in the trench is uh, really just a way for me to get my filter cloth, filter fabric in there, my rock, my pipes all pitched down to sump wells to control that water and manage it. You can see the slab here. You can see how deep it is. There is no foundation, as I mentioned earlier. If you look in the distance, you can see that uh, we've got a downspout in that corner. There's also one uh, behind you to the left on the corner uh, to the left of the door here. This is up underneath of the steps, the same issue. This is the back wall, uh, that long wall that we were looking at in the video earlier. This is where she got most of her water. There's a seasonal bar on this back wall also. And the water was just flooding in to the basement. You can even see the efflorescence line if you look close enough. Uh, the downspout here, again, this is on the front corner. So we're going to tie that uh, into its own line. It will not be a perforated line. All of the downspouts will be solid pipe. You do not want those uh, perking into the ground. All that roof water should just be going directly to the sump wells. You're seeing a coating that's put over the top of the stucco uh, down uh, fusing the slab with the stucco with a membrane. That'll seal up that crack where the stucco and the uh, slab meets. If you look, you can see we're putting in filter cloth, clean gravel. This is going to be an encapsulated trench. We don't want any soil getting into that rock. We want water to easily flow into it down below that slab. So uh, the water really has no choice but to go into that area. You can see there's more filter cloth here. We're in the midst of installing the system. You can see there are two pipes, one being perforated, one being solid. Again, the downspout is going to be the solid pipe. The perforated pipe is for the purposes of taking on water 360 degrees, whatever angle it comes at us. The filter cloth, of course, holding back uh, any soil silt from filling in that trench. This is an encapsulated trench section. You can see that the filter cloth was folded over the stone. Now we're going to be installing, you know, soil over the top of that. This is the same thing up by the front of the house where the garage meets. That downspout has to be taken care of as well. We're trying to get as much water off of this property as we can. More stone, filter cloth. These are 24 inch ADS pipes. Uh, they're very rigid. These are the types of pipes that you would see out on the highway for draining off uh, any surface water that's coming off of the highways. We're going to use these as sump wells, and they're perfect uh, for this application. They're very rigid. They really don't bend when you get them into soil. And we're going to be tying all of our pipes, both solid and perforated, into these dry wells. They're going to be going vertical. Typically, uh, they're going to go down three, four feet. It really just depends on where the water table is. And once we get these in, we'll hook those up the discharge lines and then pump out the water. You can see we've got filter cloth there at the bottom. We don't want that pit filling in with soil. So that is the purpose of that. You want as clean a water as you possibly can. We don't want to lose soil from the property. Now, in the midst of installing all of this, we ended up with a massive rainstorm. So you can get an idea of how much water she gets on this property. This is actually a day after the storm. 
It rained for, uh, oh, I believe, 18 hours or so. If you look at that wall to the left, you'll see that that uh, sealer is placed on the stucco and the slab, as I mentioned earlier. We don't want any water penetrating in between the slab and the stucco. So the water management, of course, will be taking water out from underneath of that, but we still have to concern ourselves with the surface water that's coming off of that flat surface, that stucco. Uh, if you look here, you'll see that uh, we're about 25 feet or so from the house. Uh, this is uh, one of the main dry wells. We've actually got two. And we're going to discharge this out, get it completely away from the house, try to lower the water table of this piece of property. And you can see it's kind of a mess. I mean, this is not something that is a real clean job. You got to put up with the soil laying around and rock coming in and people trampling on the lawn. There's really no way to get around it. If you look close there, you'll see that there's a white line on the stucco. That is actually where the water table was, which is actually above that slab, and that's why she was getting so much water. You're looking at a sump well here uh, that we set grade on, so that is actually where the top of our yard is going to end up being. This is an older sump well that uh, needed to be take, taken out we did take it out but you can see if you look at the slab there uh, in that one picture it's evident that water was leaching in all the downspouts get connected to the sump well of course another example of how much water she gets on the property This is the finished sump well. We've already set grade on this. We're gonna be making a concrete lid for this. All of the pipes are going into that sump well already. This is a temporary discharge line just for us to drop water tables so we can get our main pumps in. This is actually a temporary pump that's working right now just to lower the water table so we got something to work with. You can see you got four pipes entering in there. Uh, all of the sump wells are connected together. Uh, there's even going to be an overflow put in uh, for the purposes just in case the pumps fail. We've got at least some kind of protection in case we get a power outage. You can see the grade there where the yard is higher and the sump well setting grade. You can see the form for the lid that we're making for that sump well. And that uh, is actually going to be at the same elevation as the stone. This is a finished cover, uh, the concrete lid that we just put over the top of our sump wells. We don't want any kids falling in, so we intentionally make them heavy. This is the front of the house. Once the system was installed, you can see we tried not to uh, disturb the landscaping too much. She's got a lot of landscaping out here, so we didn't want her incurring extra costs, so we did the best we could. And we pay very close attention to stuff like that. This is your finished product. You can see we got the stone back. We've got our patio here up against the wall we had to tear out that section of the patio and if you look you can see we got it all back in that system is all down below this all of the downspouts connected to the wells and the system is working perfectly no more water inside of the house at all completely dry the yard pooling is gone water has been mitigated pumps are working great water's flowing great and the system is only going to get better as it gets older you're looking at sunshine here from maybe a few hours after a major rainstorm and uh, we've had several of those out here on the east coast so she was having major problems job successful